Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Now next year should see, fingers crossed, the arrival of the next World of Warcraft expansion, Battle for Azeroth. You've probably seen the trailers and the amazing CGI cutscene that they did either through other YouTubers or websites or maybe you even got the BlizzCon virtual ticket or went there if you were fortunate enough to do so. And one of the features that they're going to announce for this brand new expansion is something called Allied Races, which superficially just looks kind of eh, innocuous, to be quite honest with you. But I think these Allied Races can really have quite an impact on the narrative, particularly for Battle for Azeroth going forward. And so I think they're very important indeed. What are Allied Races? You probably know, but I'll just quickly recap. The Horde and the Alliance are each getting three brand new races, totaling up six. And Blizzard have also said there's likely more to come. To start with, the Horde are going to get themselves the Zandalari Trolls, the Upright Trolls. They're also going to get themselves the Nightborn Elves, which are the Suramar Elves. And finally, they're going to get themselves the High Mountain Torrent, the one with the Antlers, as opposed to the Horny Horns. And then the Alliance are going to get themselves Lightforge Draenei. They've got Yellow Eyes as opposed to whatever they got now. Uh, they're also going to get themselves Void Elves, which we saw kind of coming in with the Illyria storyline in Argus. And finally, they're going to get themselves Dark Iron Dwarves. Just by the way that the races are positioned per faction, to me, can lead into some very compelling narrative being told, particularly with the theme of Battle for Azeroth being Horde versus Alliance. There needs to be a lot of motivation. There hasn't really been that much motivation as to why these factions are actually fighting, considering most expansions actually end with us teaming up with the Horde or teaming up with the Alliance to defeat what the largest threat is. Now with Blizzard trying to really push a Horde versus Alliance X pack, they've really got to get some deep-seated illness between these two factions. To me, narrative is something Blizzard struggle with quite badly within the world of Warcraft. I don't find that I get too involved in the storylines anymore, nor do I really care for the characters, as most of them don't really have any development. They really are just there to spout exposition to us. However, in Pact 7.3, I actually thought there was a pretty decent story that was told there, and I did find myself getting more invested in it, which gave me a little bit of hope that going forward, maybe Blizzard are realising that that they have to get more narrative based and give legitimate reasons and motivations for characters and races and factions to act the way that they are. But to do this, Blizzard have got to stop producing books which are set in the contemporary version of the World of Warcraft which we're playing right now, because that only disconnects players from the narrative as well as the characterization which goes on within that form of media. By all means, have books talking about the First War and the Second War, or characters, Ashara, Anduin Lothar, events and pl people fleshing out their backgrounds, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I mean, for example, let me take you back a few expansions ago to Cataclysm. One night, we all went to sleep, and Thrall was the war chief of the Horde, and Cain Bloodhoof was the head of the Torrens, and Magni was the head of the Dwarves, and all that, and then when we woke up and logged in the next day, Suddenly, Orgrimmar looked completely different, and Garrosh Hellscream was the war chief. Cain Bloodhoof was dead, and Bane took over, and Magni was a cubic zirconia. And none of this was explained narratively within the actual game itself. And this is a big problem because we could have got a much better idea of Garrosh's motivations if those storylines were told in the actual game. And it's not a bad thing. Thing if the narrative makes you like a person, dislike a person, empathise with a person, love a person, hate a person. This, in actual fact, is exactly 
what the World of Warcraft needs. You to start caring more about characters as opposed to just the name of the character because member Kadga. So where exactly does allied races fit into this equation which I've just been talking about? Well you just have to look at which races have been positioned with which factions and to me it screams compelling storytelling. It screams excellent narrative could be told as to the reasons why. For example, the Nightborn Elves, the Suramar Elves, are going to be part of the Horde. However, in Legion, the Alliance helped Suramar just as much as the Horde did. So what has made the Nightborn go all in with one faction and push aside another faction? There could be a story of deceit and treachery in there. I mean, come on, the whole point of Suramar and the whole storyline going through Suramar was about deceit and deception. Or you could actually combine two of the race's storylines together and have the fact that Illyria and the Void Elves going into the Alliance actually almost pushed the Nightborn into the Horde because there was some conflict of interest between those two versions of Elves. And then not everything has to be on a visceral level. For example, it's very easy to see why the High Mountain Torren would ally themselves with the Horde because they are the distant cousins of the existing Torren who are in the Horde. But you could go one step further and maybe Bane falls in love with Myla, who's the head of the High Mountain, and they marry and therefore she automatically lends her support behind Bane and to the Horde. And this of course might once more build up more resentment within the Alliance because they've lost the Suramar Elves to the Horde, uh, some, some faction which they helped just as much, and now they've lost the High Mountain Torrent to the Horde, although they could probably understand why. Again, a faction they helped as much as the Horde did in Legion. So you've got a, a, an air of resentment building up within the Alliance side. And another storyline which could be told, it's easy to see again, why the Dark Iron Dwarves would go within the Alliance. In actual fact, it's a storyline which has been built up since Mists of Pandaria. Moira has been attempting to mend bridges between the Dark Iron and the regular Dwarves which we have in the game currently. And therefore, you could have this storyline that actually involves almost like the prodigal daughter returning home, a, f a story about family and reconnecting with family that you have, you know, been uh, detached from, from such a period of time. Not every story has to be about uh, war between the two. It could be storylines told internally as to why motivations are clearly defined between these races and joining those various factions. If Blizzard decide to go down this route, then it also gives a compelling reason for these allied races to be added into the next expansion, as opposed to just them being an aesthetical piece of eye candy. And let's face it, there's nothing wrong with actually feeling a connection to the race that you could potentially be playing. I mean, I felt really connected and understanded the motivations of the Nightborn during Legion because I thought Suramar was one of the best things that Blizzard have actually done in the World of Warcraft. Just a narrative zone, a zone which told an extended storyline through a good couple of patches. There is also another side to the implementation of allied races which I'll get to, but I think it's going to become quite apparent as I start to discuss the next phase of the video. Now, should you decide to actually choose one of these new allied races, they're not hero classes and they will start at level 20. So you will actually have to level 100 levels to the brand new cap of 120 in Battle for Azeroth. And that's just to have a top level character. The pot will be slightly sweetened by the fact that you'll net yourself a piece of heritage armor, the armor that you can see going around the video on the various respective races. But let's face it, 
Just exactly how many new players, new, new players, does the World of Warcraft get? I really don't think it's all that much. I don't think it's cruel of me to say so. I do think that the vast, vast, vast majority of World of Warcraft players are people who have played for multiple expansions. And if that is the case, then the likelihood is they have multiple alts by now. And just how much can they motivate themselves to go through the leveling up procedure again? Now, Blizzard have changed the way that leveling is going to operate in patch 7.3.5, and it's actually going to start to scale. Zones will start to scale with level, and that will allow you to see many more stories which you may have missed if you've been using heirlooms and just smashing through stuff, or it might give the opportunity to go through more of your rotation and actually get more of a feel for the new class that you're rolling as an alt but regardless how many times can you go through the leveling up procedure because at the end of the day leveling is leveling i think there's a limit to how much you can actually level up in the world of warcraft hell i've got 13 14 odd characters that are level 100 or above and it's really difficult to even contemplate pushing alts 10 levels now to get to the current top level. Never mind taking a character from level 20 all the way through to 120 to net themselves even a piece of heritage armor in the process. But if you're one of these people, and I think you're going to be in the vast, vast, vast majority that play a main character and your alts are really just there as support, but you like the look of one of the new races, then the only option you're going to have available to you is to actually make a digital purchase of a race change. So Blizzard are set to net themselves probably an absolute killing in funds here because with six new allied races coming in from the start, it definitely feels as if there's going to be something there for almost everyone. And with more races to come, who knows what they're going to add into the game as a playable race. Have you always wanted to be a Cobalt? Have you ever wanted to be a Murloc? Just think if they did those kind of races and then people would be clamoring for race changes if they wanted it to be on their main character. And I'm not saying it's right and I'm not saying it's wrong and I'm not saying it's ethical or unethical or any of that. I just think it would be irresponsible of me to not mention something which I think is so glaringly obvious. So in conclusion, I think that allied races can legitimately bring some compelling narrative to battle for Azeroth. If done correctly, they could seriously flesh out the motivations as to why the Horde and the Alliance are seriously at loggerheads with one another in the next expansion, considering the vast, vast majority of the player base will not be going out there and purchasing the books. On top of that, it synergizes very well indeed with the new leveling system that Blizzard are implementing, giving people the opportunity to test out their new scaled worlds. And also, the hardcore of hardcore people can go out there and grab all the heritage Pokemon's armor because you got to catch them all. And I don't suppose it hurts from Blizzard's perspective that people that just want to stick on their main character might decide to shell out a fortune to start doing some race changes. But you may think, as that's a real cynical way to end this video. So I'll end it with this instead. In the last couple of expansions, Blizzard have given you a character boost to take you to the top end level and allow you to start the next expansion on the same parity as everybody else. So why not with Battle for Azeroth, considering there's going to be six allied races to start with, with more coming, why don't they also add a complementary race change? And that way, if people want to make an immediate change on one of their characters, they can. Or if they want to hold it back, like we can currently do with the character boost and wait for one of the other races to come in, because they might be uh, more willing to change then, they can use it then. I think 
that isn't too much to ask for. I think that's very fair considering how many uh, new races are going to be implemented in the game. But I'd like to know what you think in the comment section down below. But I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming links. They're in the description down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.